Hi there folks, Dr. Hammer here with another video tutorial. This tutorial is looking at factorising quadratics by completing the square. So before we look at factorising, we need to just do a little bit of recap on perfect squares, which we'll use to actually do the factorisation itself. So remember, perfect squares come in a couple of forms here. When we expand it out, We'll either have this form here, or x take a squared equals x squared take 2ax plus a squared. So as an example, if we have x plus 5 all squared, and we expand that, becomes x squared plus 2 lots of 5. times x plus 5 squared, which equals x squared plus 10x plus 25. Okay, so looking at the relationship between this number and these numbers here, or and the resulting numbers, so the coefficient of x is just equal to uh, the x, the, sorry, the 5 times 2, the constant at the end is just 5 squared. Okay. So looking at an example. So we'll just start off with the first step here, that of completing the square. So imagine we start off with a quadratic of this form, plus 8x, take 7. This number here is 2 times 4. So we get x squared plus 8x, and to complete the square, what we need to do is add 4 squared. Okay, so adding this number here squared. To keep the equation in balance, we need to subtract that number, so subtract 4 squared, and then we take 7. Simplifying this, we get x squared plus 8x plus 16, take 16, take 7. Grouping these terms together, this now forms a perfect square. So we get x plus 4 all squared. And then simplifying these numbers at the end, that will equal minus 23. Okay, so before looking at the second step in factorising by completing the square, we need to recap difference of squares. So looking at the definition here, a squared take b squared can be factorised into a take b times a plus b. So as an example, if we have x squared take 49, we can write that as x squared take 7 squared. And then using the rule that we've got above, we can write that as x take 7, x plus 7. Okay, we're going to use that information in completing uh, our factorisation using completing the square method. Okay, so now we'll return to our example that we were looking at earlier. So we've got x plus 4 squared take 23. To write that as a difference of squares, what we need to do, the first, the first expression remains as it is. The minus 23 we write as negative square root of 23 all squared. Now we've got a difference of squares, so we can factorise that. That becomes x plus 4 take the square root of 23, and then multiply by x plus 4 plus the square root of 23. We would look then to see if we can simplify that any further. In this case, minus square root of 23, well, square root of 23 can't be simplified. We can't combine it with a 4 at all. So that would be our complete solution. Okay, looking at a second example. So we've got x squared take 6x take 8. This time 
we've got a negative in front of our x term, or the coefficient of x is a negative number. So we're going to use the second equation we had for perfect squares, but the process is going to be the same. So firstly, we write that as x squared, take 6x, and we look at, remember, 6 is equal to 2 times 3. So we look at adding 3 squared. To keep the equation in balance, we then need to subtract that same number and then subtract 8 at the end. Simplify that, plus 9, and then we've got minus 9, take 8. This, or the first three terms, that's our perfect square, so we'll write that as x, take 3 squared, and then take 17. The negative 17 we'll write as negative, oh sorry, the square root of 17 all squared. Now we've got a difference of squares, so we can write that as x take 3 take square root of 17 multiplied by x take 3 plus the square root of 17. And that's, again, as far as we can factorise that particular example. Okay, so, so far the examples, the two examples we've looked at, the coefficient of x has, in both cases, been an even number. So the example I want to look at now is a case where the coefficient is an odd number, such as this example here. So in this case, if we look at that, 5 is the same as 2 times 5 over 2. So what we're going to do here is we need to add, so the 5 over 2 becomes our key number there. So we add 5 over 2 squared, keep it in balance, we subtract. 5 over 2 squared, and then add 2 at the end. The first three terms then become a perfect square, which we can write as x take 5 over 2 all squared. Simplify the next term, same as 25 over 4, plus 2, which is the same as 8 over 4 which we write then as x, take 5 over 2 squared. These two terms simplify to minus 17 over 4, which we write as 17 over 4 square rooted and then squared. Now we've got a difference of squares, or well, in fact before we do that we'll just simplify that expression, that term at the end, take the square root of 17 over 2 all squared, because the square root of 4 is just 2. Applying our difference of squares, we get x, take 5 on 2, take the square root of 17 over 2, multiply by x, take 5 over 2, plus the square root of 17 over 2, and if we want to simplify that a bit further, just carry on over here, equals x take 5 take root 17 all over 2. Okay, so final simplification step. So as a last example, a bit of a what if here. So the question is what happens if we get an example like x squared plus 2x plus 8. Again, we carry through the same process. So we get x squared plus 2x, halve that, we get 1 squared, take 1 squared plus 8. So we get x squared plus 2x plus 1 and then plus 7. The first three terms forms a perfect square. And we end up with x squared plus 1, sorry, x plus 1 all squared plus 7. Now, the issue that we've got here is we do not and we cannot have a difference of squares because we've got a positive number there. So in that case, we will say cannot 
be factorised any further. Okay, because it is impossible to get a difference of squares. Okay, that wraps it up. I hope that's useful again. So uh, stay tuned for the next video.